I've been celebrating Christ all week, thinking about the work of the cross and how he's alive and he's with us every single day of our life, every moment, every second. Hallelujah. That's something to praise God about. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
He's not a dead God. He's a living God. The death, the grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't stop him. Man couldn't defeat him. But I'm here to tell you, he's alive today. The stone's been rolled away. The angel said, he's not here. He is risen. And because he's alive, we've got so much to rejoice about this morning. Hallelujah forevermore. So glad to see each and every one of you here in the house of the Lord this morning. Excited about what the Lord is doing in our midst and in our worship and in our services together. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family that Jesus Christ is alive and well. Come on down to Cross Point Church with us and help us to celebrate and worship Him. Yes. Hallelujah. We won't go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We want to remember those that are on our prayer list that we've been praying for. I take a few names off because we've been getting some good praise reports. Praise you know, the Lord's been touching and the Lord's been moving and the Lord's been healing. We you know, and and been meeting needs, but there's still some that the Lord's still moving on on their behalf. So we want to remember them, and I want to encourage you to remember the Monday night prayer time. Spend whatever time, and I'm not saying that you have to pray the whole hour, but there's nothing wrong praying the whole hour if you feel getting that spirit of prayer. But if you can spend just a few minutes, whatever time that you want or that are willing to give to the Lord to spend time in prayer for those around us that have needs and for our nation and for so many other things. Amen. Those who have requests this morning, any, any special requests? Yes. I think you need you to lay hands on her and pray for it. So. Okay, we will do that here in just a minute. Lord, is anyone else? Uh, and you pray for I have three brothers. Yeah. Pray for them. Yes. Maybe we'll just do that. Matthew, Justin, and Lord. Okay. Anyone else? I want to remember, uh, especially this morning, Alan Van Buskirk. He needs a miracle. Yes, he does. Amen. Anyone else? I have lots of love left in the Lord. Yes. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And don't forget uh, Lila Jean, please. Yes, so I was having surgery this week she needs to on an aneurysm that is getting bigger and, uh, and it can be a very touchy thing. So she needs our prayers this week. Holy Lord God of heaven, we come to you this day. We believe in the miracle working power of our resurrected Savior. My Lord God of heaven, your word declared by the stripes of Jesus that we are healed. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon you. That's your word. And your word declared by your stripes, we are healed. We pray for the healing, the physical healing, the emotional healing, the, 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 the mental healing, whatever healing needs to take place this morning. My Lord God, we're praying for a very special touch on behalf of these brothers. My God, get a hold of their hearts. Move on their behalf. Move on the hearts of our lost loved ones and our lost family. Remember Alan this morning, my Lord God, we're calling upon you, the miracle-working God, to move on behalf of him for Lila Jean. My God, touch and move in her behalf this day, we pray. My Lord God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sis, let's pray for you. Holy Lord God of heaven, yes. the word says there's any sin among you that have called for the church, yes. that the church anoint with oil, and it's not the oil, but it represents, it represents the spirit of Christ, and the spirit of Christ will take care of whatever need that we have. In the name of Jesus, right now, we stand in faith believing, we stand in faith believing right now in the miracle working power of a resurrected Savior. My Lord God of heaven, you know all needs. You know the beginning from the end. And my Lord God of heaven, we're believing you. We're standing and we're acting and we're responding in faith of your word right now. My Lord God of heaven, you do thanks and give you victory. You do thanks and give you praise in advance for the victory that you're working, for the miracle that you're doing right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. We're believing God's going to do something great for you. We're believing 
It's not confined to these four walls. We are the church. Yes, Wherever amen. we go. Hallelujah.
Not even begin to comprehend and imagine the things that God can and will do for His people because He loves us that much. The Word says, I have not seen, neither ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. We're so excited this morning. Praise the Lord forevermore. Couple quick announcements that I want to share with you as we get started this morning. This coming Wednesday night, we will begin a new study. And I'm excited about this, looking forward to this. Been wanting to do this for a while and been waiting on the, the Lord to say the time is right. Uh, we just concluded the book of Galatians this past Wednesday night. And we will begin this Wednesday night a study on the tabernacle. <coughs> And I'm excited about this because there's a lot of things that we look at when we look at the Old Testament tabernacle because that is a foundation of the modern church that we live in today. And we are excited about that. And, and I want you to be here. And if you can't be here for whatever the reason may be, please try to watch it on the on, on the, the uh, Facebook page or on YouTube. Or if you'd like for me to, um, make sure I've got your cell number and I can text you a copy of the link so that you can watch it and we, we want you to see this and, and, and get a hold of this. So, also Brother Claypool, the State Administrative Bishop of the Church of God will be with us next Sunday morning. Excited about that. Uh, he is coming to bring us the word next Sunday morning. Brother Charlie will be speaking for us here in a couple of weeks uh, uh, on Sunday morning and we're excited about that as well. Next Sunday morning, Brother Claypool is coming and we are going to organize the church. As you know, I am a Church of God credential minister. 
we were going to organize the church and through the fellowship of the church of God to give us access to a greater reserve of resources that we need in this day that we're living today to be effective for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, so excited about that and that's just a uh, you know just part of the growing stage and part of the process uh, that we go through as a church and and uh, we're excited about what's happening there so be here next week I know Brother Claypool will have a word from the Lord that will, that will touch you and will bless you and will lift you up we're looking at the gospel of Matthew this morning as we begin to look on building a great church now, I want to tell you something. I believe with all the heart. I'm prejudiced. I don't mind telling you. I'm prejudiced. I believe we have a great church because I've got great people that we pastor. I think you're some of the best people that we have ever had the privilege of working with by, and together to try to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. I've pastored some great people. I've attended church with some wonderful people and I love them and have fond memories of them. And, and, and reflect on, but I'll tell you, you by far are some of the greatest people that we have ever had the, the, the privilege of working with to try to, to build something and do something for the kingdom of God. Now that's what we're doing is we are here to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to do a work in us and through us. I want you to notice something this morning. And Jesus says in Matthew 16 and 18 that I will build my church. Amen. I will build my church. It doesn't belong to an individual. It doesn't belong to a group. It doesn't belong to a family. The church belongs to the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. And it's by, by us, you and I working together in unity and harmony as one as the hands and the fingers and the toes and the arms and the legs and the body of Christ and allowing him to work in us and through us that we can build a great church. We can see a great church. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get on here in just a moment. Because you began to talk about a great church. And what does it mean, a great church? You can ask anybody what their opinion is of a great church. And they'll have a real quick to give you what they feel is a quick church, a great church. You have pastors that will, will say one thing, while the member in the pew may say another. Most of the time they come together and they agree. But I want to tell you, my friend, everyone has their opinion of what it takes to make the, a, a church great. You know, some in, in saying that the church needs to get uh, more in touch with this generation and reach the middle of the millennials. And at the same time, there are those who say, well, we need to reach all generations. Uh, there are some that say we need to get more technologically advanced and utilize technology and, and, and go with the times uh, and be modern and, and, and all these things. And then there are those that say, well, we don't need that stuff. We've been getting by without it for all these years. Uh, and there, then there are those uh, that say we, we need to have service uh, on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Uh, then there are those that say, well, we need to have service on Sunday morning, on Sunday night, and on Wednesday night, and have cell groups and home groups and, and fellowships throughout the week, and have activities almost every night of the week. Uh, you know, some say we don't need old-fashioned preaching where the preacher gets emotional and he shows his emotion. He needs to be dignified and he needs to be refined and, and soft-spoken and he needs to teach us the word rather than be, 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 be emotional when he pre pre presents the word. Then there are those that said, I don't want to sit under dead, dry preaching. I want my preaching to be emotional. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah, him to yeah. feel what he's preaching and yeah. feel what he's bringing to fall because it's a fire yeah. shut up in his bones. Yeah. I will tell you, my friend, some will say, well, the preacher should just preach on good things and make me warm and fuzzy all over. Have a positive this and, and don't talk about the cross so much because it's gruesome and it's too painful to re reflect and remember. But then there are those that said, yes, we need to be reminded of the cross. Yeah. We need to be reminded of what Jesus Christ 
did for us and for our behalf. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, everyone has an opinion about what it takes. You know, there are those that say, well, you know, we want our music to be modern and upbeat and contemporary. But at the same time, there are those that say, well, we like the old-fashioned hymns. Yes. I want to tell you something. Everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their idea. Mm -hmm. But a great church utilizes all these things. Yes. See, churches have personalities. Yes. And the key is learning the personality of the church and what suits them, what works. Because what works in one place might not work here. What works here might not work anywhere else. But I'm here to tell you, I believe with all of my heart that as we pray and as we seek God yes. and as we, are, we, we come together in unity and harmony, the Lord will work together in our midst and he will work together through us to do a great work in this generation for his glory. What does God say about the church? What does the word say? And you know, I, I, I want to tell you something. You know, and I don't mean this to be smug or hard, but the Lord's not really too concerned with our opinion. Yes. You know that? Right. He's not really interested, Brother Charlie, in my opinion about things. He gives in his word what he wants to, and what he expects and what pleases him, and it's up to us to follow that, not what pleases me. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, you know, it is the Lord's church. It belongs to him. Yes. He gave his life for it. Yes. He ordained it. Yes. He breathed the breath into it on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago that brought this institution that we call the church, this living organism that we call the church, this body that we call the church. He brought it to life. And can I tell you, he is the one that has kept it going for the last 2,000 years. And he is the one that will keep it going until the day he raptures the church out of here. Yes, amen. See, the word church comes from a Greek word that means the Lord's house. And it means that was used in, if I were some of the uh, writers of, of the word as a place of worship. It is a New Testament uh, translation of the Greek word ecclesias, which means it's synonymous with a, an Old Testament uh, word that, that, that means they called out assembly. The people that have been called out and called aside and set aside for a purpose. Uh, I will tell you something, my friend. We, the church of Jesus Christ, we have been called out. Uh, we have been called out from the mindset and the mentality yes. and the lifestyle yes. and the things of this world. Yes. We've been set aside for the purpose of being the light and the salt of Jesus Christ. The reflection of him to this world to make a difference and to make a change. I'm here to tell you, culture shouldn't affect this the world, but the church should be the one setting the tone and setting the pace and being the example for the world to follow. Yes. Yes. What makes the church great? Oh, I want to tell you something. People play a part. Understand what I'm saying? Because without people, there would be no church, right? Without people, there would be no church. Skills and talents. And why didn't our music sound good this morning? Amen. You know, skills and talents and this type of thing play a part. Yes. The buildings are important. You know, the location is important. There's a lot of things that are important. But I want to tell you something. None of these things are what makes the church the church. What makes the church the church is on the is the life and the breath and the moving of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. You hear what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost some two thousand years ago. My Lord of Heaven, when the Lord breathed upon that group.
group of people and they began, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They wasn't, they didn't get just a touch, they didn't get just a thimble full, they didn't get just a goosebump. The word of God said they were full of the Holy yes. Ghost. And my God of heaven, they left that place and they began to turn the world upside down. You want to know what it takes? To make a great church, get into the textbook. What textbook? The book of Acts. You want to understand what a great church is supposed to be. My friend, let me tell you, a great church is to be a book of Acts church. Yes. Because the book of Acts church is what changed the world. Amen. People were saved. People were healed. People were delivered. Yes. Man, the whole cities were changed. Yes. Whole communities were changed. Yes. Whole regions were changed. Yes. Because mm. of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. Without the Spirit, without the Holy Spirit moving in our midst, how does He move in our midst? He moves in our midst as He moves through us. Yes. Hear what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit moves. In our midst as he moves through us as we lift our hands in worship and praise. As we lift our voices in praise. As we worship him and we praise him and we allow his spirit to flow not just in us but through us like a mighty rushing river. My friend, let me tell you, that brings life. That brings happiness. That brings peace. That brings joy. That brings strength. That brings unity. That brings oneness. Yes. That brings healing. That brings hope. That brings what this world needs. Yes. But without it, it's dead. Yes. Amen. Dead. Yes. It's more, nothing more than a, just a fraternal meeting or a social club or a social event. But I want to tell you something. What makes this different than a social event? or a family gathering, or a family outing, or any other place where just a group of people get together. It's the power yes. of the Holy Ghost yes. as it begins to move yes. through us and begin to yes. touch through us and begin to operate through us. There's a song that's out there that I don't know, you may have heard it, but if I could sing, I would be, it is my theme song, and I would sing it to you probably almost every service, as it says, touch through me, yes. Holy Spirit, yes. touch through me. Flow through me, yes. Holy Spirit, flow through me. Love through me, Holy Spirit, yes. love through me. Yes. My friend, let me yes. tell you, that's what the church is, is the living, breathing body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. As we are allowing his spirit to flow through us, not just inside this sanctuary. Thank God for what I feel. I feel his presence and I feel his anointing here this morning. And I have been ever since we come into this place. But my friend, let me tell you, we are to come into this place. We are like when we go to the gas station and our tank is all empty in our car and we stick that nozzle in the tank and we fill it up. We come into this house, whether it be a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night and we fill up we get full yes. oh my god of the power and the anointing and the word and the spirit and we go out to the highways and the hedges we go out to our jobs we go out to the communities we go out to our families and we begin to pour out and let the holy spirit yes. flow through us yes. Amen. how are they going to know about the things of God. If we keep your secret. See if this gospel is hid. It is hid to them that are lost. Yes. And it's up to us. That this world see. And recognize. And know. The power of God. Yes. The love of God. The mercy of God. The grace of God. And understand how the spirit of God operates as they see it operate through us. Hallelujah. Real more. Yes. Can I tell you that a great church preaches sound doctrine? Yes. Can I tell you Paul in his dying declaration to Timothy warned Timothy that there was going to be a time coming when men would not endure sound doctrine. 
But they were going to be those that were going to be looking here and looking there, trying to find somebody that would preach and teach what they wanted to hear. I'm going to tell you something. That's the hour that we're living today. That's the hour that we're living today. Folks, and I, I, I don't mean this ugly. Please help me. Holy Ghost this morning, not to offend, but help me to preach. That's one reason why so many people don't want to sit home and watch it on TV rather than go get involved in their local church. It's because they can tune it on channel 4 and if they don't like what that preacher's preaching, they'll come to channel 11. And if they don't like what that preacher's preaching, they'll come to join channel 22 or channel 39 or whatever channel it is because they're looking for somebody that's preaching what they want to hear. Something that's going to tickle their fancy. Something that's going to give them a yes, goosebump. Yes. My friend, let me tell you, I believe the word of God can go forth. And I believe that it can encourage. I believe that it can lift up. I believe that it can, can do all the things. But there are those times when we need to Sound doctrine, yes. because sound doctrine is what helps us to walk the path yes. that's yes. pleasing to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sound doctrine. Yes. Oh, some people consider that the old-fashioned. But I want to tell you something, my friend. As you began to look at the Word of God, the things that He has given us in the Word. I've never read an expiration date on any of them. Amen. You know, anything you go to the grocery store and buy, you find it's got an expiration date on it? Yes. Buy can canned goods and it only lasts for so long. You gotta read, they got an expiration date on them. Buy everything, it's got an expiration date, but I'm gonna tell you something that has no expiration date, and that's the word of God. Amen. The word of God has no expiration date. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he wrote into himself that and what God spoke in the Old Testament is still relevant today. What he spoke in the New Testament is relevant today. Can I tell you and that should the Lord delay and the Lord tarry it'll be relevant tomorrow yes. and the next day. Yes. yes. There's no expiration date. Yes, hallelujah. And we need to preach sound doctrine. Amen. We need to teach hallelujah. sound doctrine. Yes. We need to live sound doctrine. Yes. Always. Oh, hallelujah. Always. My God of heaven, we've been commissioned by God to teach this world what it means to be a Christian. I preached on this, how the big Christian meant little Christ. And we are supposed to be the example of Jesus Christ to this world. And how do we do that? I want to tell you something. We're good and we're talented and we're wonderful. And there's all kind of accolades that well, we can put to that. But the only way that we can be Christ-like is through the Holy Ghost. You hear what I'm saying? As we allow the Spirit of Christ to speak to us and to guide us and direct us. And then it requires us. It requires us to be submissive. It requires us to be submissive. You hear what I'm saying? It requires us to be submissive. What do you mean, Pastor? That means when the Holy Ghost begins to prompt us and begins to speak to us, that we've got to say, not my will, but your yes. will be done. Yes, amen. Yes. Something that the Lord has laid on my heart. Here recently, a while in prayer, There is a spiritual darkness that is not only overtaking our land, there is a spiritual darkness that has almost completely overtaken taking our land. Yes. yes. And almost overtaken. Yes, Jesus. I remember reading in the Old Testament where Eli was the priest. And there were some issues there, and I'm not going to take the time to go into it this morning. But the Bible talks about how that the lamp in the temple, the light in the temple, was about to go out. And you'll learn something about this when we do the tabernacles to so come, come understand what I'm talking about. But before the light in the temple went out, God raised up a Samuel. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? Can I tell you, yes. God is calling some Samuels today? 
God is tugging at the heartstrings of some men and women today. And he's calling some in this generation to be his spokesman. Yes. To stand up for him yes. and take a stand for him. To right some wrongs and make some correction and do what be a vessel that he can flow through. Yes. Because I want to tell you, my friend. The Lord spoke to my heart. And he said one of the reasons why the darkness is overtaking, not taking, taken, meaning it has happened. The one of the reasons the spiritual darkness has overtaken the nation to the degree it has is because the church has tried to put the Holy Spirit on the shelf yes. and do it on their own power. That's right. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. We don't need the Holy Ghost. We need education. Mm. Nothing wrong with education. Amen. I've got a good friend of mine, a young man and his wife, and I met them uh, many years ago. And he just recently got a PhD. Yes. He had his PhD published, and I've got a copy coming. I'm excited and looking forward to reading it. I believe the Word teaches us, Brother Charlie, to study. Yes. To study. Yes. Then we ought to study. We ought to study the Word. We ought to have a hunger to want to know more about the Word and the things pertaining to the Word. But education by itself isn't going to get the job done. Yes. I want to tell you, I believe that God has given people talents and abilities that I wish I had. My wife can touch the keys on that keyboard right there and make beautiful music. I touch the keys on that keyboard and make my cat howl. <laughs> I've seen Brother Danny and you others can touch strings on a guitar and make beautiful music. And I've tried to touch the same string and do the same chord and do the same thing. And for some reason, to me, it always sounded B flat. What do you mean? It's about as flat as it's going to be. But thank God that He has given those abilities yes, and talents yes. and gifts you, that can do these things. Thank God he's given those. Oh my God, I, 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 I look at Sweetie back here that can draw. And I look at her drawings that she puts on Facebook. And, and I'm just so envious. I just sit there and, and look at that one and put on there the, 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 the card that you sent for your teacher that's going to have the baby. And I just said, Lord, I can't even draw a straight line. And look at this, what this baby girl is drawing. Look at what she's doing. Yes, amen. And I'm going to tell you something. But all that is not going to do anything to change the heart of mankind. Amen. Only one thing can change the heart of mankind. And that's the moving and the operation of the Holy Ghost. What happened on the day of Pentecost? When the Holy Spirit came and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. And there were, yeah, there were the doubters and yeah, there were the mockers. And there were, well, these are just drunk on new wine. I want to tell you the doubters and mockers, and the, 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 they, they, they've been there for 2,000 years. And they'll be there for 2,000 more. But can I tell you, when Peter stood up, these are not drunken as you suppose. Seeing it's just the third hour of the day. But this is that that was spoken yes, by the prophet Hallelujah. Joel. And he began to preach Jesus. Yes, he began to tell them about Jesus. My friend, let me tell you, there was something different. Jim Peter had told people about Jesus before. Peter had spared Jesus before. But there was something different about Peter's words this time. They were impacted. Yes. They were saturated. Yes. They were influenced. The yes. Holy Ghost yes. used his vocal cords. Yes. The Holy Ghost yes. used his words. The Holy Ghost used Peter that he touched the hearts. There are 3,000 people gave their hearts to the Lord that day. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Get the Holy Ghost out of the back room. Get him in the back in the, back of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Get him off the shelf. Get him back in our hearts. Yes. Dust it all, my God. Get him back uh, operating, flowing in us and through us. 
to make a difference. Talent and education and all these other things aren't going to do anything to change this world. But I want to tell you something. A spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled believer, somebody full of the Holy Ghost and power can touch the heart of a hardened heart and they can see them weep like a child. Yes. And if there was ever a time and ever a generation yes. that needs what I'm talking about this morning, yes. Amen. it's the time yes. that it is today. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. This generation, the hour we're living today, needs a life change yes. and a lifestyle change. And the only thing that's going to do it is the Holy Spirit of God flowing through holy men and holy women of God as we preach and as we teach and as we proclaim and as we live the living Word of God. Yes. That's what makes a great church. Amen. That's what makes a great church. Oh, I want to tell you something. This generation needs to hear of our testimony. You say, what are you talking about my testimony? I'm going to get you involved. Mm -hmm. Has the Lord ever done anything for you? Yes. Raise your hand. Yes, thank you. Well, Pastor, I just don't know how to share my faith. You just acknowledge that you know how to share your faith. What are you talking about? Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit to anoint my words and anoint my vocal cords yes. because I'm going to tell this person what the Lord has done for yes. me. Yes. Amen. I want to tell this person how the Lord yes. brought me comfort when my heart was broken. I want to tell this person how the Lord gave me strength when I was going through some of the darkest times of my life. I want to tell this person how the Lord healed my body when I was sick. I want to tell this person whatever the case may be. And I want to tell you something. When men and women that are full of the Holy Ghost yes. begin to let the Holy Spirit use them and flow through them and use them and tell others. Can I tell you what the Lord has done for me? Yes, My Lord, I get to talking about that and get to sharing what the Lord has done in this life. And we ain't got time. You won't eat after a while. I know because I want to tell you something. He took a hard-hearted, hard-headed, redneck rebel We turned this life around. Yes. He loved my number so People want to know why I get so passionate for the Lord. When you got school teachers that look you in the eye and tell you, boy, you'll never amount to nothing. Boy, you'll never amount to nothing. Sticks in your mind. Yes. But then I begin to think of how this little rip, this little hungry, hard headed, hard hearted boy that didn't amount to nothing. Ooh. I begin to think of how Jesus let them take a cat of nine tails and beat him brutally. How the his word, the word said he carried when, when he went to the cross. He bore my griefs. He carried my sorrows. Yes. Can I tell you all the torture and all the, 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 the torment that he went through on, on that cross? It was because of this little nothing boy that he did it. Yes. You understand Amen. what I'm saying? My Amen. Lord God, you, if you don't like shouting, you better hold on because I feel a shot coming. Hallelujah. It was because of this little knot headed, do nothing, useless enough, bag of nothing, that he said, I'll go. I nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And if he'll do it for me, he's done it for you. And he'll do it for whosoever will. That's why I get 
get excited. That's why I get excited. Because he loved me when I was unlovable. He loved me when many said he worth nothing. And he ain't worth the powder it would take to blow him up. My God, but he said, I love him enough. And I see something valuable. And I see something worthwhile in him. For I'll suffer shame. I'll suffer reproach. I'll suffer pain. I'll suffer agony. I'll give my life blood so that he can be redeemed and born again yes, into the household of my God. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah, that's why I get excited. Yes. That's why I get excited. And I tell you what the Lord has done for me. Somebody better hold on his reins because I feel a shout Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We need to get excited. We need to get excited. Can I tell you, it's our responsibility. See, a great church realizes that they are a place of acceptance. What do you mean? Red, yellow, black, and white, they're all accepted yes. in this life. Yes, hallelujah. We're not just isolated to a certain ethnic group that can only speak a certain language, but we are all mankind. Yes, amen. We're not just for a, a certain group that live on a certain side of town and have a certain social status. We are for all mankind. Yes. I want to tell you something. We're not just for those that are perfect. Because we start trying to try, try to look for people that are, well, only, only perfect people are the ones we're going to invite to church. We never would invite anybody to church. And that means we'll have to stay at home ourselves. Because I don't want to break it to you. We're not perfect. Amen. Amen to that. But we're forgiven. Yes. Hallelujah. We're redeemed. Yes. Like the little song says, Sister Bev, he's still working on me. Yes. If I let him, he's still working on me. He's still touching my heart. He's still touching my life. He's still wanting to flow through me. He's still wanting to perfect me in his image yes. and in his life. Amen. We are a place of acceptance. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we as night. If somebody stumbles and falls, we don't kick them to the curb and say, well, they deserve. I want to tell you something. The word taught us, and we talked about this a couple of weeks and nights ago, to reach over and take our arm and put our arm around yes. them and lift them yes. up. Amen. Love them. Yes. My Lord, you know what this generation needs? It needs some Peter and Johns. Yes. Men that are full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Men that are full of the Holy yes. Ghost. They went by that beggar man that had been sitting there for 30 something years. They crippled him his feet. And he, he, he was living off of charity and handouts. Yes. And he was asking alms. And no telling how many times they had passed him before. No telling how many times they had seen him. They may have even dropped money in his little basket. But this this day something was different. Yes, they walked by him and said, Silver and gold yes. have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus. And the word said, they didn't just speak it. They said they reached down and they grabbed him yes. by the yes. by the hand yes. and they lifted him to his feet. Yes. This generation needs men and women yes. full of the Holy Ghost, yes. full of love, full of power, full of passion, willing to reach down to the hose that life has them broken. Life Life has them broken. Life has them broken. And lift them to their feet. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it makes a great church. Yes. yes. Buildings are important. Thank God for this building. Yes. Amen. We appreciate the Legion so much for allowing us the opportunity to utilize their facility. But the church, this is this building is the church. Yes. It's a temporary sanctuary. Yes. yes. But we're the church. Yes. We're the church. Outside the four walls of this building, we're the church. It takes the spirit of Christ. It takes the love of Christ. 
to taste the word of Christ to a world that is in need of Christ. Technology is important. We live in one of the most technological ages of any generation. And I love technology. Sometimes. Sometimes it can be aggravating, but sometimes it can be great. I'm so glad we have the technology that we've got the, the TV with the where we can put the word on the screen and we can highlight it like we do and we can put videos on there and we can put the music on there and there's so much we can do with that little computer right there and through our cell phones and all the technology that we have. It's great and that's wonderful. I'm so glad we have this little camera right here that we're broadcast that we're videoing right now this service. And after a while, when I go home and I download this and I put it on YouTube and then I share it on Facebook and there's a few people that I email the link to. Thank you, Lord. And can I tell you that from right here in Redfield, Arkansas, we are literally doing something that reaches around the world. Yes, amen. Isn't technology great? Yes, amen. But as wonderful as technology is, Technology without the anointing of the Holy yes. Spirit does not get the job done. Amen. 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 That cool camera right there, I don't have enough oil off of it, I don't have enough oil to fry two chickens in it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because every Sunday morning, these young, you guys don't know this, but every Sunday morning I walk around this room and I anoint this room. Brother Danny, I anoint this building from door to door, floor to ceiling. Everything, every chair, every, you don't realize it. If you ever sat down in that chair and felt something when you sat down, it's because it's been anointed. It's because it's been prayed over. God, I don't know who's going to sit there this morning, but you know who's going to sit there. You know what they need. You know what their circumstances, you know what their situation is. Lord God, move on their behalf. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Technology without the morning is nothing. But technology with the anointing, yeah. my Lord, yeah. is unlimited. Yes, yes. The things can be done. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So a great church uses and utilizes the spiritual gifts. Yes. The spiritual gifts, as outlined in Scripture, were given to the church to build up and edify and strengthen and help the body of believers yes. and help the world around us. Yes. But when we begin to say, well, those are outdated and those are old fashioned and we don't need them anymore. I want to tell you something, our effectiveness goes down to nothing. Amen. We need the spiritual gifts yes, in operation. Amen. We need the spiritual gifts in operation. Yes. yes. And I tell you, A great church is a praying church. Yes. A great church is a praying church. Yes. A great church is a people that will shut themselves up and shut themselves off, get in their prayer closet as Jesus talked about, and just spend some one-on-one -on -one time with him. A great church, oh, I want to tell you something. You know why we used to see things happen in the church? Because the church would get together and pray. Yes, yes. Two of the hardest things a modern day pastor has to do in pastoral work is getting people to come to church and getting the church to pray. Yes. Amen. I want to tell you something. Prayer is the most powerful thing we could be given. Amen. Is when we begin to communicate with God and let Him communicate back with us. Speak to Him and let Him speak back to us. There's power in prayer. Yes, there is. There's authority in prayer. There's, there, there, there's hope in prayer. There's deliverance in prayer. My Lord, as you begin to read through the book of Acts and you begin to see the things that happened when the church prayed and it said the church prayed without ceasing a few times. And the church prayed without ceasing. I don't know what they prayed. I have, uh, the whole group got together and prayed nonstop. I don't know where they took it in shifts and I'll pray a couple hours and you come pray another hour and you come pray another hour. I don't know if they did it, but there was a continual prayer that was going up yes. by the church. And my friend, let me tell you, when the church began to pray, 
things. Yes, awesome. hallelujah. Yes. This thing we call the church was born out of a prayer meeting. When a church ceases to pray, things start to die. Yes. Amen. Apathy sets in. Strife sets in. Contention sets in. Jealousy sets in. Because prayer has left out. Without prayer, the Spirit of the Lord isn't going to be there. Unless you invite him in through a season of prayer, the Holy Spirit's just not going to bust in, kick that door in and say, I'm coming in whether you want me or not. But can I tell you that when we come to this place, Lord, we invite your presence. Yes. Lord, we want you here. Yes, feel this place. Yes. Feel this atmosphere. Feel this sanctuary. Yes. Feel our hearts. Feel ever. Feel us with your presence. I want to tell you something. He's very quick. And eager to respond. Yes, amen. And he'll do that. There's so much more that I can share as I'm running out of time. But I will say this in closing. A great church is a faithful church. Yes. A great church is a faithful church. Now, faithfulness doesn't mean I'm faithful sometimes. Faithfulness means I'm faithful all the time. I can't tell my wife I'm faithful to her if I done been with three other women this week. Amen. I've not been faithful to her. Amen. I'm faithful to her because I've been with her and her alone seven days this week. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days. That's faithful. Yes. We can't say we're faithful to Christ on a hit and miss relationship. Amen. We can't say we're faithful to the church on a hit and miss relationship. I want to tell you something, and I, I say this in love, you need to understand this. The way we treat the things of God is the same way that we respect and treat God. That's right. The same way we treat the church. Is the same way we treat God. Amen. Because as I said, we're starting out this morning. It's not my church, it's his church. Amen. Amen. He's the one. Yes. And a great church is faithful people who were faithful to God. They're faithful to their calling. They're faithful to their ministries. They're faithful to their jobs. They're faithful to whatever task that they have been given. Oh, I wish I had more time. What is a great church? A great church is you and I coming together, empowered with the Holy Spirit, with each other, arm in arm, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder. United together as one in the Spirit of Christ, doing what we can do to fulfill the commission of yes. Christ. Amen. Of reaching this generation. That's what makes a great church. Yes. Bow your heads. Hearing us say this morning that I believe that we have a making. I believe we're already well on our way to be a great church. I love you, and I think you're wonderful people. You know that. Can I tell you that I believe that yes, there's some room for improvement in some areas in every one of us. And I say every, every, every one of us. Myself at the top of the list. I don't have time to go into it this morning, but I will share with you when I share some this week with my wife, the Lord gave me something a few days ago in prayer and then he reminded me of it this week of all the things that he has in store for this church if we're willing to let him 
and we're willing to say, okay, Lord, here I am. Flow through me. We're committed to the task. He has great things in store for this body. And I'll share it with you in God's time. If you feel in your heart with me this morning that we have the makings of a great church, and you want to be a part of a great church, a Book of Acts church, a church that's touching this age and touching this generation, making a difference, I want you to stand on your feet and come up front. Let's join hands. Because we're going to pray together this morning. We're going to, we're going to pray this morning. I believe we're well on our way. Y'all come up. We're well on our way. We're well on our way. The Lord is doing things in our midst. The Lord is doing things among us. of being the church that can change this generation. That can change this generation. Holy Lord God of heaven, we come to you this morning. We come to you this morning, Lord. And we're believing you, Lord. So we see you this morning. Yes, he did. The gates 
here yeah but it makes it hard but my sister is I mean I know I'd go and I'd be more involved right. my, you know right this is hard you know it's hard mm-hmm. to even figure that's out how, that's how I wound up here in Redfield come up here to take care of my yeah. daddy yeah. yeah so you know yeah you said how you gotta do it but the Lord will give you the strength to do it he has too yeah he will. Yeah, 
This body style, other than this, my son was, I got a Jackson on the new one. Same thing. Well, what I was probably 10 years ago, he was seven years old. Daddy. He make a there's a there's one that's uh got the seven to it that make for a certain they, they do a lot of like that like Oh, no, those are uh, P90. P90, yeah. 